Hi there, welcome to the first 10 minute one of the day. I'm going to be out most of the day, so I'll maybe make one later on tonight in my return. But the topic of this one is why Keir Starmer has brought about a civil war in the United Kingdom. And those words might seem quite harsh, they might seem extravagant, exaggerated, but they're not. The reality is we have now got a civil war in the United Kingdom and the man in charge of this country put there to serve the people has caused this split by his failure to actually deal with the issues in front of him. Now, I know I'm going to get called a far right racist, fascist, all these words, when all I have is concerns for my country. I'm not a fascist, I'm no far right. I'm a person that's got concerns for his country. No more, no less. Now let me explain what's happened here. In the last few weeks we've had four quite disturbing triggers on the streets of the United Kingdom. We had a soldier in uniform stabbed within an inch of his life about a week, a week and a half ago. Stabbed. Multiple times. We had that. We then had mob rule being allowed to decide what happened in the streets of Leeds. When a family had their kids removed from them for the safety of the kids, to protect the kids, and the community decided that that wasn't to happen and they weren't happy with that. And we saw the, the police give way. It's the first time to mob rule in this serious events. It's the second thing out of four. We then seen the police force demonised through a an interaction at Manchester Airport. But when the full story came out, nobody can defend the actions of the police constable. However, when you see the full picture, you can maybe understand why it happened. When we have police attacked viciously and women police officers injured. And then obviously, their community were not happy with that and decided that, you know, this is unfair to be arrested for such a thing, that they would attack a police office in the United Kingdom. So that was the third. And then the most horrific action that I've seen in the streets of the United Kingdom out of the recent events was a murder of three young children going to a playgroup and the attempted murder of many more. I believe the attempted murder figure is 10. And I just hope and pray that that death toll doesn't rise because we've not had any updates over the last day or two about the health of those others injured, critically injured, in that massacre at a kids' playgroup. So we put those four things in together over a short period of time. So we've got stabbing a police officer, mob rule, and leads and authorities are doing their job, and the attack the police officers at Manchester Airport and the subsequent attacks on the, the, the police office, because the community weren't happy with that, and then the murder of three children. You put all that in together in a short space of time, people are going to have concerns. Terrible concerns. And then what happens is, Prime Minister decides to intervene and take his role as a leader of this country. And he started it with a press conference where obviously he spoke about the murder of these children. Known fine well that people are concerned about that. We all have a fear for the safety of children. It might be one of the biggest, most natural things you can do, and that is want to protect children. It's a pretty basic need. But the people of our country need to feel that their children are safe. But he took, for a rare reason, told us that 
a, this was a terrible thing, and we all waited to hear how the leader of this country was going to react to these murders, the attacks of police officers, the attacks of soldiers in our streets. And what did he do? He spoke about these far-right jobs in Southport, in London, and in Hartlepool. Totally ignoring the stabbing of a soldier and young children in the streets. That wasn't, we didn't come up with a way of fixing that. We came away with fixing the problem of people unhappy with that and actually going and taking the streets to protest. And we put draconian laws in place where we um, have been told that these people doing such terrible things like protesting were to have their uh, travel limited, their movement limited. And some, I, I don't know, this came right out, the, the, the blue was some, you know, facial recognition against these people. And we talk, they were told that they will be treated like football hooligans. And football hooligans, being a football fan, I understand how, they, you know, if there's powder keg um, fixtures, you need to present yourself to police stations and things like that. People have had football hooligan issues. But that's the way we've tried to deal with people who are concerned about law and order, the safety of children, and immigration in this country. That's it. If you're concerned about these things, you take to the streets to protest, you're a criminal. You'll be, you're criminalised for having those thoughts. We're totally ignorant to it. And it, the thing that a leader has not done has given us any comfort or anything that's come out as a consequence of a soldier being stabbed in the street and three beautiful wee girls stabbed at their day club. Nothing. We have had zero response. And that's a week now. Since over a week since the soldier was stabbed in the streets of the United Kingdom. But he told us what we'll do with people that have the concerns. And now we're seeing footage from across the country with stabbings, with violence, with one group against the other. That's civil war. See when people are fighting with deadly weapons on the streets of the United Kingdom because they're imposing groups. That's a civil war. Whether you like it or not, that is the definition of a civil war. Deadly weapons. When you now see the two-tier policing, instead of trying to rectify that situation, if anything, that's got worse. We've seen video footage of not just one situation, but with men shouting Muslim chants with arms. Big blades, big curvy blades on the streets of the United Kingdom with nothing. And when the, when it, I mean, and it looks as if it's a majority now of people in the United Kingdom, look what happened in Belfast, for God's sake. If you, if you want to buy into this nonsense that this is, this is all just far right, you know, British National Party type, or EDL, that's the, the, the sort of bo the boogie word that, um, they're attached to it now. If you want to believe that, and look at what happened in Belfast yesterday. A city torn for decades with violence, sectarian violence, two, two groups opposed to each other. They were standing in the streets together yesterday. Can you believe that? Eh? Irish Republican Nationalist and British Loyalist from Belfast standing in the streets together because they have the same concerns. Keith Starmer has pulled off the biggest coup in the world. He's managed to unite the two communities in Belfast with a common goal because of the way and the fears of the people on these shores. I heard reports yesterday, they're unconfirmed, I may add, but it would make sense, that people from the Republic of Ireland who have been sick of the government in their country, the way they're treating their own people, travel to Belfast with tricolours to stand beside people they would normally throw bricks at. That's incredible. I, I was actually emotional when I seen that. Because, and frightened at the same time, equally. Because it shows you 
the levels of despair across groups of people that are actually so similar. The people of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, and even the Republic of Ireland. They have the same concerns. And what did our government do? Rise up a good wedge. By not coming up with any answers. But putting things into place to the detriment of one side of an argument. People are dying in the streets of Britain at knives and the government have invoked zero laws to make that more difficult. But they've immediately been able to bring in laws in, in Section 60s, etc. for people that are concerned. So concerned they're taken to the streets. And I won't condone or con nor condemn the violence in the streets in the United Kingdom because regardless of whether I agree with it or not, I actually understand and seen it coming. So I don't know how this gets fixed. The, the, the newspapers, the government and the police need to stop this nasty far-right narrative and treat everybody the same because that's what the problem is. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please subscribe and hit the notifications bell. But most importantly of all, my sure care stammer or anybody else that wants to divide by words, this country that's led to violence in the streets, group versus group. See everyone else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.